one. A few years ago, explorers opened an Egyptian tomb which had been closed for 3,000 years. There stood an exquisitely carved coffin of a little child with this inscription. Oh, my life, my love, my little one, would to God I had died instead of thee. Love and sorrow are as old as mankind. Simeon, in today's Gospel, prophesies the sorrow which Mary will go through on Calvary. This child, he said, is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel. And turning to Mary, he says, a sword of sorrow will pierce your own soul too. Which is precisely what happened. When the centurion's sword pierced the actual heart of Jesus, a sword of sorrow pierced Mary's heart at the same time. Even though her soul rejoiced in God, her Saviour, as she says in the Magnificat, she is also referred to as the Mother of Sorrows. Mary, in this sense, shares intimately in her Son's passion. In the Mass, we celebrate the death of Jesus and unite ourselves with his offering of himself to the Father. Our temple is the Church, and at every Mass we die that little bit more to ourselves, drawing us closer to Jesus in his sacrifice. Because of the frailty of our human nature and our attachment to sin, however, howsoever small, our offering, our presentation, will never be totally pure, at least this side of the grave. But this is where we need the grace of Jesus, and all, which also comes to us through the Mass. The second reading tells us that Jesus really shared our human nature and he was beset with all sorts of temptations and trials similar to the ones which we encounter in our daily lives. He was like us, the scriptures tell us, in all things but sin. Now our participation in the Mass will be our antidote against these weaknesses. We won't as easily succumb to temptation as we might if Christ were absent from our lives and we never went to Mass. The second reading also says that Christ atoned for our sins as a result of which he becomes a fountain of mercy for all who want to quench their thirst for this divine pardon. So, when we present ourselves to God at this and every Mass, that fountain of mercy gushes forth. But receiving the mercy of God is not magic, but oftentimes it needs to be preceded by fasting and prayer. The prophetess Anna in the Gospel today never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. These are two of the ingredients of Lent, which is not very far away. If we present ourselves to God each Sunday, having fasted and prayed beforehand, the chances are that we will not just be one with Christ in his love offering of himself to the Father, but also more receptive and open to receive his divine pardon and healing. The end of the reading today tells us that Mary, Joseph and Jesus, on leaving the temple, went back to Nazareth. When we leave the church, we too have to go back to our ordinary everyday lives and be assigned to others of the mercy and love of Christ which we have received. Thank you for listening and God bless you all. Oh.